In previous videos, we've looked at finding the area under a curve using calculus. If we had a function of x, we could say the area was equal to the integral from a to b of the f of x dx. So we use this now, we integrated and evaluated to find an area. An example now might be y is equal to x squared. So if we took now y is equal to x squared and we now chose two points on the x-axis, let's say 1 and 3, we could find the area trapped under the curve by integrating. So we could say the area was equal to the integral from 1 to 3 of x squared dx. So let's go ahead and integrate this and then evaluate. The area would be now 1 third x cubed, and we're interested in this now from 1 to 3. If I now sub in the limits, I can see that the area would be 1 third. We're going to have 3 cubed, which is 27, minus 1 cubed, which is 1. And we can see that the area would be 26 over 3 units squared. So that's the exact area trapped under the curve y is equal to x squared from 1 to 3. It was easy to integrate and evaluate y is equal to x squared. Often it's either very hard or impossible to find a function whose derivative is the f of x. In this case we can approximate the area trapped under a curve using the trapezium rule. So let's go ahead and look at a trapezium. So lower down school you might have met a trapezium and what we have now is two parallel sides. So if I now put up two parallel sides which we call A and B. We have a perpendicular height here and then we have a slant height. So if I just put these up now and we will say that this is a right angle here, this is A, this is B and this now is the height. The area of this trapezium is given now as A plus B divided by 2 multiplied by the perpendicular height. So we can find the area by simply plugging these numbers in. So if this one was 10 and this was 6 and this was 5, 10 plus 6 divided by 2 multiplied by 5. The trapezium rule takes the x-axis and splits it into equal strips. We then approximate the area under the curve using a number of these trapezia or trapeziums. The more you use, the better the estimate for the area trapped under the curve is going to be. So, for example, if I use 1, it would be pretty poor. If I use 2, it would get better and better. So, as h becomes smaller and we get more and more of these, our ac the accuracy or our estimate becomes a lot better. So, let's go back to our curve y is equal to x squared. Now, what I was looking at is the area between 1 and 3. What I'm going to do now is draw a trapezium and I'm going to draw that trapezium and that's going to start just here. So let's change this over and get now a different colour. So let's start now at 1. I'm going to draw my trapezium up here. So my trapezium is going to go from here to here and that now is going to give me an x coordinate of 2. So we'll come up like so and then we will connect this up. Straight away we can see that the trapezium is slightly above the curve. So what I've got now is the height of the trapezium of 1. At this point, I've got now whatever the function of x is. And as we'll see later on, we're going to be evaluating at given ordinates. So I've got 1, 1, 2, 4. If I now consider 3, I come up to 3 and I will find 9. If I then come down, there is a second trapezium. And we can see now, again, this is a slight overestimate. And the reason it's a slight overestimate is because the, uh, the curve is concave in this area. If it was convex, then we'd have now a slight underestimate. So let's go ahead and look at the area of these two trapezia. So what I'm going to do is just sketch these up. So we've got now the first one. And if we look at that, we've got now a width or along the bottom, a height now of one. If I drew the other one, and these are not very accurate, but will hopefully give you some idea. Again, we've got now a height of a width at the bottom of 1, and now we can put on here the lengths of each of these. So they are two very, very rough diagrams. This is one right here. What we've got here is 1 and 2. We've got 2 and 3. 
So these are the coordinates, these are the x coordinates. So I've got this point here which is going to be 1. 1 squared is 1. Just here I've got this point and that's going to be 4. 2 squared is 4. This one, remember, I've got 4 and it's not a, obviously a very accurate drawing. And then this one, I'm going to have 3 squared, which is 9. So what I've got now is the following. This is going to be now 1, this is going to be 4. So if I consider this is going to be 1 plus 4 divided by 2 multiplied now by the height of 1. If I consider this one, this is going to be now 4 plus 9 divided by 2 multiplied by 1. So what we've got here is the following. We've got 5 over 2 plus now 13 over 2, which is going to give me 18 over 2, which is going to give me 9 units squared. So this is an approximation using two of these trapezia. So you can see this is a slight overestimate. We saw now on the last one that we had 26 over 3. So 27 over 3 is going to give me the 9. This, and we can see exactly why, is going to give me an overestimate. So if I now put more of these up, so I split this up and put 1 half, and in uh, 1 and 1 half, and then 2 and a half, what I would have now is 4 strips. At the moment, I've got now 2 strips. So we can see an approximation, a very rough approximation, the area is approximately equal to 9 units squared. And this is how the trapezium rule works. So the take-home point so far is if we have more strips, the approximation will be better. If the curve in any given area is concave, we will have an overestimate. If it's convex, we will have an underestimate. What we're now going to do is look at a formal definition of the trapezium rule and then look at one that we can work with. So when you open an exam book, you will be given the trapezium rule and this is the trapezium rule. The integral from a to b of y dx is approximately equal to one half and then we've got all of this right here where h is equal to b minus a over n. What I want to do is make this easy to work with. So let's go back now to our curve. What I'm going to say for the trapezium rule is simply we take now one half. We then multiply that by the height. The height right here is this length. It's the difference in the x-coordinates. We take the first, we add this now to the last, and then we add together two lots of what is left in the middle. Now, middle added and then close our brackets. So just writing this out, we will see now exactly how this works. So let's now consider this particular curve right here. What I'm going to do is the following. I'm going to draw up a little table. So what we're going to have are now the coordinates or ordinates that I've looked at and evaluated. So this now is two strips. So what I can say then is I've had on here two strips. Two strips gives rise to three ordinates. So when I'm talking about ordinates here, one, two, and three. So we can see three ordinates. So if we have n strips, we have n plus one ordinates. So let's go ahead with my table. So what I've got then is my x, and then I've got my y. So if I subbed in now one, which I did, I got one out. If I subbed in now two, I got four out. If I subbed in three, I got now nine out. Let's now apply the trapezium rule to get an approximate area. So I can say now the area is approximately equal to one half h. Now h is simply the difference in the x coordinates. It's the height of each of these trapezia. So I can say that this is going to be one half multiplied by one, multiplied now by the first. This is the first value. That's going to be 1. Plus now the last. This is the last value, which is going to be 9. Plus now 2 lots of whatever we've got left in the middle. So if we had more ordinates, we might have more. So for example, if I had 4 and I had 16 here, 16 would go here and then 9 would be in the middle. So what I've got then is 2 lots now of 4. So if we consider this, we've got now on here, we've got 1 half. We're going to have here 10 plus now 8, 
which is going to be 18, which gives us now 9. So we can say the approximate area is equal to 9. Let's look at that. Let's consider what I've just done here. If I look at this point right here, we can see now this is the 1, that is the first, this is the last, and then we got two lots of what's left in the middle, and that was me evaluating 2. So we can see now that our first value was 1, our last value was 9, and quite clearly each time we add another trapezium, we're going to have these two values. That is what the two values are in the middle. Essentially, this end point becomes the start point of the next trapezium. So, if you want to go ahead and think it in this way, this is perfectly fine. The area is approximately equal to 1 half h, where h is the difference in the x-coordinates, multiplied by the first plus the last plus two lots of what's left in the middle. So, let's say I now decided I'm going to introduce another strip here. So what I'm going to have, instead of finishing this now for at 3, I want now the approximation of the area from 1 to 4. So what I'd have now is 3, that will give me 9. I then have 4, and that will give me 16. So what I can say then now is the following. I'm going to have the area will be approximately equal to 1 half. We've still got 1 as the height. We're going to have the first, which was 1, plus now the last, which was 16, plus two lots of what was left now in the middle. And we can see in the middle, we've got now the, uh, the 2 squared, which is 4, and the 3 squared, which is 9. So we're going to have two lots of 4 plus 9. So let's go ahead and just consider what that's going to be. And again, if you want to work it out from there, you're more than welcome to. The area is going to be now 1 half, and then we're going to have in here... This is 26, that's going to give me 27, and that would give me 43. So we can say that the area is approximately equal now to 43 over 2. Now let's look at that, let's look at the integral now. If we took the integral from 1 now to 4 of x squared dx, what we're going to have then is the area will be equal to, let's say the area is equal to that, the area will be now 1 third x squared cubed and we can say now that we're interested in this from 1 to 4. So what I've now done here is increased the length right here. What I could have done as an example is increased the number of strips. So if I wanted I could have split these up and we could have evaluated now 1.5 just there and actually let's just move that out. We could have done that and I could have made these smaller. So as you can see now as I decrease now this uh, value of h these are going to become better approximations. The more I can get along there, the more likely it is to fit the curve. So let's go ahead and just evaluate what I've done just to show that this is going to be very similar. So we're going to have now, that's going to be 60, so that will be 64 minus 1 over 3, which is going to give me now 63 over 3. 63 over 3 is 21. Now consider that's 21, what's that going to be? 21.5. So we can see now that on here we've got a similar result. So this is the exact area and this is the approximation. Now you could look at the percentage difference by doing 21 minus 21.5 divided by the actual and times it by 100. And that will give you now the percentage error in the approximation. So some questions might ask you to do this. This is the actual area, and this is an approximation, and we would end up getting that. So there we go. Hopefully that's allowed you to see how the trapezium rule works and why we have two lots of what's left in the middle. So when you're given the particular formula, ignore this. The area is approximately equal now to one half h, which is now the difference in the x-coordinates. We're going to have the first plus the last plus two lots of what's left in the middle. So the middle added up. And that now, middle added, that is the informal approach to the trapezium rule. So we're using the trapezium rule if we're struggling to integrate the function. OK, let's go ahead now and have a go at one of these. Let's find one. OK, so in this particular...